Hello everybody, how is it going? My name is Lucas and welcome to the Cajun Guitar Gear Podcast. Boy, we have a few interesting things to talk about today and we're going to start off today's podcast by doing my favorite thing to do on this podcast and that's making fun of Gibson. Now, Gibson has released the Gibson Theodore Standard Electric Guitar. Now, this is not anything new. It's it's kind of a, a re-release, right? So if we come over here, back back a few years ago, they did release this. Essentially, it's kind of like a double cut Les Paul in a weird way with some fins that face kind of like up and out. And this, it has a Thunderbird headstock on it. And what this was derived from was original drawings from Mr. Theodore Ted McCarty. He helped develop a bunch of Gibsons, like guitars, and they never really put this one out and they put it i said i didn't really put it out they put it out once upon a time and discontinued it well they re-released it and i honestly don't know who asked for this because this guitar kind of reminds me of like a, a les paul at home just kind of like a double cut it's just so awkward looking this one is a little bit different where it has actual uh, humbuckers in it what humbuckers in here probably burst buckers i would imagine or something Blaze in the Blueprint, yeah, a Gibson 57 Classic, uh, 57 Classic and 57 Classic Plus pickups in it. It has that Thunderbird. Actually, yeah, this has the hockey stick headstock on it, which is a little bit better than the, uh, yeah, that one had it too. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Sorry, guys. Yeah, it has that uh, hockey stick headstock on it. So I don't mind the headstock, but the rest of this guitar is just very awkward. And it just kind of reminds me of like, like I said, a, a double cut Les Paul, but the thing that bothers me about this is put forum contour on it, right? I mean, this is a lot like Les Paul, sort of. I mean, you have your knob down here, which it's like a, it's not a blade, it's like a little toggle switch, to move your pickup positions. Tom hard piece uh, for your tail, and you have a pit guard that's on it. So, I mean, these are okay, but it's like, who who asked for this? I mean, and they're at like $2,000 for these. Where are these made? Is it going to show where these made? Ah, actually, it's made in the USA. Wow, 2K for a made in USA Gibson, which is not terrible. New from the factory, but ah, these guitars don't do it for me. And they come in three colors. You can get red, you can get ebony and or black, or you can get the antique natural, which I kind of like natural. I'm, I'm digging it. I like natural and red. I like the black too, but I'm just more of a natural and a red person. God, these guitars, they just kind of, it's just kind of like, that's what it makes me do. I'm just kind of making this face like, mm, face? I just... They're weird. I mean, at least the price is not 50 grand, like we talked about last week with the Jimmy Page reissues. But oh man, Gibson. I mean, okay, I, I gotta give them their I gotta give them where to do. They actually decided to put out another release of something that wasn't the same old crap that they've been doing forever. So I guess good for you, Gibson. I guess. But yes, this is a new Gibson. So let's move on. You probably already saw it because on the screen. Let's move on to some actual cool guitars from Jackson. The American Soloist SLG, SL2MGs are out, and you have some colors to pick from. So we have this Lambo orange, we have a black, and we have kind of like a military green. That's what, what do they call it? What green is this exactly? It's what green is this? Matt Army Drab. So yes, I was very close. And they come with EMGs, 8185 EMGs, stainless frets. Thank you. Thank you, Gibson. Gibson. Thank you, Fender. Thank you, Jackson, for finally putting some stainless frets on your guitar. It's been way too long. It is a through-body, three-piece maple neck construction on these things. 25.5-inch uh, scale, 24 frets, stainless frets. You have the inverted mother of pearl shark fin. These are awesome. You have Godo um, locking tuners on it there. These are great. And you're looking at about 2600 for them, which for this guitar, made in the USA... That's a good deal because most other things that are like this are probably about a grand more. So good on you, Jackson, for keeping the price kind of low. I like them. Some of my YouTuber friends got these and they, they look really awesome. This is a win. This is an absolute win. Like these are awesome. They have awesome colors, awesome features. You have some EMGs in there. This is good. This is cool. I like it. I love it. I would buy the orange if it were me, because I think that's cool. I love the shark fins on it. Um, tell me what you think about these. I think this is this is hitting the spot. You're looking at 2600 for American Made. Has some cool pickups, stainless frets. This is good. All right, let's move right along. We're going to keep it fast, keep it quick today. 
Line 6 has launched the new Catalyst CX guitar amps. Basically what this is, is you get 12 amps that are derived from the Helix. They're actually going to take the firmware that's on here that's going to be updating the older Catalyst too, which is nice to see. They're keeping the firmware on the old ones updated too. So you have 24 quality effects on here. And it does, you have a tap tuner and XLR out. You have a power amp input for powered speaker, MIDI functionality, two channel USB recording interface and power output options. And you can also have a desktop editor. Well, this reminds me of, to tell you the truth, it's kind of like a, a spider, line six spider revolve is what this reminds me of, which is really cool. So the amps in it, you have clarity and arc, arc type clean mod, aristocrat, Grammy Mako, Karen Elimsley, and all these names are, are weird. Oblivion, the Oblivion name looks cool. Dabadonk, which I think that's reference to the big bottom. You have Kinetic uh, 2204 mod, which is, I imagine that's a Gibson. You have a voltage. So the names are kind of weird names, but I guess you can kind of figure out which ones that they're modeled after. I like that it is an interface. I had never really dug deep into these amps before, to be honest with you, before I really like started doing the podcast and paying kind of more close attention to gear, but I think these are awesome. Like this, for someone who is just starting out, this is a great amp. If you need something for like playing in like a worship group or church, this is a great amp. If you want something to keep at your practice space to jam with your band, this is a good amp. It just, it kind of covers a bunch of different ranges and you have everything from Badonk and you can get some normal type sounds too. Um, let's listen to it a little bit. This is from the uh, official video from Line 6. Line 6 Catalyst CX are a range of dual channel amplifiers that look and sound great. They are available as a 60, a 100 or a 200 watt combo. They are simple to use and they have controls that will be familiar to everybody. Each amp is centered around 12 different amp voicings, which are derived from our flagship Helix multi-effects. Helix amp models and voicings have been used by professionals on stage and in the studio for many years and artists at all levels continue to Each of these amp voicings also has its own custom boost, which has been chosen specifically for that voicing. And the archetype clean adds a minor tour overdrive pedal. And two effects can be used at once. They are assigned to the two effect controls for easy access. Catalyst CX has six different delays. Six different modulations. Six different filter synth pitch effects. You get the picture. I don't want to just sit here and watch the whole video without even commenting on it. I think these are great. What is the price of these things? That is what I would like to know. Let's um, jump on over to Sweetwater and check them out. If you would like to buy any gear, actually check my link in the description. I am a Sweetwater affiliate. I have links in there. You can check them out and I get a tiny kickback. I put that back into the channel I get so I can keep giving you good content. So let's look at this. For the 112, we're looking at 300. For the 200 watt, we're looking at 500. That's not that bad. It's seriously not. I, like I said, three hundred dollars for the the sixty watt one twelve. Bank it. That's that's good. That's for what it's given you and all of the different options. Like I said, this seems like a grown up line six spider for me. Which I constantly make the, the meme joke that the line six spider big bottom is one of the best tones ever made. I kind of actually want to get a line six spider and put it through his paces, which every other YouTuber's done and. Glenn Fricker's taking one and smashed it because he said it sounded like crap, but I kind of want to do it for my own fun. The coolest part about this to me is that the older catalysts are getting updated. So this is the new ones. The older ones are getting updated with the same forever, like I said before, which is really cool. Uh, last but not least, the only little quick riff that we're going to have is some great news for those of you who have a Quad Cortex. The Quad Cortex plugins 
that have an X on the end of them will finally be added to the quad cortex. Finally, this is the things that they promised when they launched it. It's finally coming to fruition. So I know it's like Nameless, Soldano, and I know Gojira too. It's the two plugins that receive an X of 84. Yes, Fortin Nameless and X and the SLO 100. Those are going to be available before CoreOS. So basically, the CoreOS will be. So basically, if you have these, you get the free update if you buy them from now, and that's what you get. Uh, no, plenty and then they uh, plenty and nails like it's if you own them you're going to be able to use them on the quad cortex itself and they're adding uh, transposer doubler transplant bin pitch correction circular delay uh, plug-in gate doubler blend and a non graphic nine eq you can do side chaining i'm just running through this real quick guys this is a plus. so yeah so all of the like the Pliny and the Gojira X that's all going to come on the quad cortex. I'm, I'm finally glad to see this, but it's going to be interesting because the main issue, my friend constantly complains about this. So the main issue with the quad cortex is you can't transfer data over the USB port that is on it. Pretty much like everything, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but from everything that I've gathered on this, you have to do it over Wi-Fi, right? And they made some very weird hardware choices with the quad cortex it only has a 2.5 gigahertz radio in it and for those of you who don't know there's two types of, of wi-fi channels typically that it's used it's 2.4 which is the older it's a little bit slower but it goes a little bit farther and you have the 5 gigahertz the so 5 gigahertz is a little bit faster and you can get some you know gigabit speed you can approach gigabit speeds on the 5 gigahertz well they cheaped out and they only put the 2.5 gigahertz Band in there, and apparently it's very bad. My friend constantly says it disconnects; it like stop downloading, which which is ridiculous because people complain about it. And they're like right next to their access point on their wireless router, and it's really bad. I don't really understand that. I don't understand not being able to transfer stuff over the USB port. Like USB two speeds are you know they're four hundred four hundred megabits per second, four hundred eighty megabits per second. I mean that is not the fastest in the world. It's not gigabit, but hey, it's faster than doing it on Wi Fi, and a wire is going to be way more steady than what Wi Fi is going to be typically. So that's some of the hardware choices I made. But hey, I'm I'm celebrating. I am on your side, quad tech, quad cortex people. You're finally getting the plugins in there. That is awesome. You're getting more value uh, for those who have been holding on to it for a long time. Because I know a lot of people sold theirs. But ladies and gentlemen, that is going to wrap it up for me today on the podcast. I'm sorry if I made any errors talking about stuff. Kind of a little bit of a time crunch. I had my birthday celebration at my in-laws today. So that kind of put me a little bit behind. So I'm going to have to hurry up and edit this and upload it. Because I know a lot of you guys, some of you guys are probably looking forward to it. I want to say, again, thank you everybody who's watching this. Because you're the only reason that I'm still making it. It's because I have dedicated people out there who look forward to it. So thank you so much. As you can hear, that's my dog, Rev. He's tired of me sitting here talking to you guys. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you next week on the next one. Peace.